Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Jason Kinsley and I'm a librarian here um, stationed in the Medical Center Library. And um, I'd like to thank Jan Carver, uh, who is over in our uh, Science and Engineering Library for doing a presentation today on SciFinder. And um, Jan, I'll let you go ahead and share your screen and take it away. And if we'll be trying to monitor chat, so if anybody has a question. Okay, if you would monitor the chat, I'd appreciate it. Okay. The database, I want to welcome you all here this, this afternoon. The database in question today, or that we're going to talk about, is SciFinder N, which is the latest name for um, the SciFinder database, which is produced by the American Chemical Society's Division of the Chemical Abstract Service. And I'm going to share my screen momentarily, and we are going to... Start and we're going to do this live. All goes well. In front of you, you will see. Ooh, that's not what I wanted. Stop. Are you seeing the SciFinder A to Z databases or are you seeing something else? I am seeing your email. Okay. So I have the wrong. Give me one second. I'm going to stop share mm -hmm. and share again. And while we're doing that, if you have not registered for SciFinder, you will want to do so. Um, SciFinder is a database that you have to, to register for. It's not one that you can just freely go to the library's website and drop in to the SciFinder database. I wanted to show this screen first. This is in the library's A to Z databases, and you'll see that there's a blue register button. And if you've never registered, you'll want to go there first. I encourage anyone who has used SciFinder at a different university or organization that you be sure and um, re-register. Just because that way you will get all the journals that we subscribe to here at the University of Kentucky. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. And Jason is going to monitor the chat. And I'm going to input my password. And we're going to start looking at the database. As you can see at the top, you have CAS SciFinder. What is this? This is uh, a database that's chemistry only or chemistry foremost. I should say that uh, it includes the chemical, abs chemical abstracts database. It includes the registry database, chemical registry. It includes Medline, which is another reason I wanted to talk to the audience that would include the medical center. Uh, it also has uh, a number of other items within this database. So it's a huge database, but it has some special searching capabilities. And that's what I wanted to really talk about today. And I want to see, can you, you can see now the CAS SciFinder at the top of the screen. Can you, Jason, okay, can you see all the way up to the alerts button? Yes, I can see okay. the, your entire okay. screen. Okay, and this is a database that you want to pay attention to. All sides of the screen, there are going to be things in multiple places. And you're going to want to look at everything um, across the whole screen. We're going to look today at um, how to register. We're already registered. You have to register for the database on campus right now and go through the registration button, the register button. You cannot just come here and put in a password name and password. You have to go through the register button. Um, that's to keep track of everyone who's using the database. This is a chemistry database. Anything to do with chemistry. You will not find anything on economics or art unless it is related to chemistry in some way. Um, this is a database where you're going to be able to do special things. You're going to be able to draw structures or reactions, which is not possible in other places. You're going to be able to do a, some really neat um, searches. So, but we're just going to go across the top of the 
screen here, you have alerts, which we'll get into more later. We'll have, there's a button here for saved. Anytime you do a search, you can save it. And there's also a button for your profile. And this is a, an important button to remember because this is where you can get help and support. This is where you can, if you have any problems within the database, you can look and see if there is a support page or help page on that particular item. They do a number of videos now. It's not just um, written material PDFs, but there's also videos that you can watch. So if there's something you want to research more fully or see more about a particular type of search, because in an hour, we're just going to get started. Um, this database has so much information and so many ways to check for things. It's just a number of possibilities, and you'll want to go back and actually try the database. The more time you spend in here, the more you'll find. When you're searching, we're going to start at the top left now and look for the various ways that you can search for something. Uh, you have an all button, which means you're going to search substances, reactions, references, suppliers, all of that at the same time. We're not going to do this too often. I wouldn't suggest that you start here. Kind of figure out before you start where you want to, what you're looking for. And we're going to go over substances first. This is a, you can draw here and we're going to open up a drawing screen. This is cast draw. You can use Kim Doodle to also draw structures, or you can use Kim Draw. Uh, cast draw um, is the program within CAS. Before I go any further, I want to warn you all or let you all know that CAS now has their own software. And consequently, they can make revisions very quickly. So if there is a problem, they will or something they want to add to the database, they can add it quickly, which means that they make updates now about twice a month, which means that if you come in today in two weeks' time, you can come back and it may look a little bit different. So do not despair. Just keep looking around and you'll find what you need. Uh, major revisions will be very uh, clear. Some of the little minor things, you may have to go and look in the help screen, which I showed you at the very beginning, and look there and see what has happened to a particular entity. This is a drawing screen. Uh, this is, um, if you are used to drawing chemical structures, you can draw them here. Uh, if you also want to put in um, cash registry number, this is one place where you can search by cash registry number. This makes it a very unique database. Um, you can also work search by smiles or inches or inchy keys. And what these smiles, inches, and inchy keys are, they have taken structures and converted them to letters and numbers so that a computer can read it. And a smile, I'll tell you what these abbreviations stand for, SMILE stands for Simplified Molecular Input Line Entry System. And then INCHIES are done by the IUPAC, which is International Chemical Identifier. So every structure now is going to have not only a cash registry number when it's registered here in the U.S., but it will also have SMILE and an INCHI. And that's so that computers can do analysis in, in various other things as well. But we can draw here. We can add all kinds of things here if we so desire. And I'm going to put in, we'll just put in there just so you can see. I'm going to put in a number instead of drawing because that will take too much time at this point. And the, the structure comes up and you can do all kinds of searching from this point. You can import structures you can export them. You can do all kinds of things here. This is something if you are a chemist and do a lot of drawing, you'll want to really play around in this part of the database. Uh, but it's a fabulous way. If you have a structure to start with, you can input the structure here. If you have a program 
that will produce a .mol or a mol file, you can import it into this particular drawing and program. And then you can, uh, we don't want to, we don't want to dismiss it and close. And then you can search by the formula or the structure rather. Okay, that's the first tab under the searching for is substances. You can actually search for substances. You can search for reactions. If you know a reaction number, you can put it in here and look for a reaction. I'm not going to spend time there because that takes a little bit of time there. and I've got to watch the clock and make sure we get through in an hour. Uh, but this all takes a little bit of time. You want to take time to look at everything. Um, we'll probably come back to reactions in a minute. I really want to hone in here in references and really spend some time here. Uh, this has become even more specific when you're doing a search here, when you're doing a keyword search, because prior to this, if you go to a number of databases and put in, I have a special term I wanted to put in, just one. acid rain, you would get any kind of articles or any kind of reference that included these two words. If you put a phrase in like this in SciFinder now, you are only going to get references to have the term acid rain, next acid next to rain, not rain acid, but just acid rain. So this is going to be something you need to think about when you're doing phrases in SciFinder. But oftentimes you're going to have more than just a term or two. So you're going to want to do something a little more specific. And we're going to erase this off of here so it doesn't mess up our search later. If you have author's names, but we're going to go down to concepts. You can do... Anytime you see an arrow or a carrot pointing in any direction, click on it. Uh, there's something else there. And in the references search, these are your possibilities, the various fields that you can search in. And then some fields have multiple things. You have an author's name or you have the ORCID ID. ORCID IDs are being added if the author has included their ORCID ID in the paper. If they have identified themselves and put their ORCID ID, it will show up in SciFinder. If they did not put it in the article or with the article that they wrote, it will not show up yet in SciFinder. They haven't gone backwards and added everybody's ORCID IDs yet. You can look for publication name, organization, title, abstract or keywords, which may be a good place when you're starting a topic search. But we're going to look at substances or concepts, rather, for a minute. And we're going to look at one. We're looking for muscu spinal muscular atrophy. And we get here and we see that there are a number of spinal muscular atrophies. And we want only two but you see there's a type 2 with a new number 2, and there's a type 2 with a Roman numeral. So we're going to add a field, and we're going to add a concept field again, and we're going to get the second one, the one with the Roman numeral. And pick it up, and we're not going to add them. You see you have your Boolean operators out here. You want to be sure, and I want them both. And I am going to search that as it is. I come up with 155 results. And then you can see we have the options of filtering. We have a number of things that have showed up now. We start at the top. We can look at the substances that are in these 155 references. We can look at the reactions that are in the 155 references. You see my 155 results. We can look at the citing references, and we can look at a knowledge graph, and I'll go into that in a minute. We can create answer sets, and then 
do all kinds of things with the answer sets. We can save them or download results. And then we can also save results. And you can also save the search and also have an alert. An alert is actually lets you know the next time a particular reference is added to the database that meets your search requirements. And that will be given to you. And there are a number of options there. But you also want to look at how it's sorted. That's the next line down here. Right now it's at rel relevance. We can click it and change it to the time cited. And we will, as soon as you click anything, it changes your results around. Okay, we still have the 155, but we now have the top cited reference. And that'll become important in a minute. But I also want to go down the left-hand side for your possible filters. There are a number of filters, and this changes depending on the type of search that you're doing. We're doing a reference search, so we have possibilities that are listed here. First off, document type. That's going to be top in any reference search. You have languages, authors, and it continues down. And a nice button to remember and within SciFinder is the search within results. So if you have this 155 and you only want a particular item within this 155, you can go down here and search within the 155 and it won't go back out into the full database. It'll just search within these 155. I'm not going to do that at the moment, but we're going to go back up here and I want to show you a couple things here. This first one has been cited 742 times, and I want to show you the citation map here. This, if you've used another database that does citation mapping, you'll really like this. The citation map is going to show us the references from this particular article. This is the article that we had shown by the blue book image here. The left side is all the references they used in their particular article. And the color coding is important. The darkest purple is the one that they quoted the most within their article. So this will be a nice way. You know, this is probably one that they have in more than one place in the article. It doesn't tell you where within the article, but it does tell you they quoted this particular article the most. Now, if you go to the right, and I consider this a teal kind of greenish color, uh, this is starts at the top with the article that has quoted our article in the middle the most. So this is going forward in time. Okay, it will tell you this article, and then you can do some other things. Okay, this article has quoted the article that I'm concerned with the most, okay? And then we can go out to who is quoting this article and we can keep going forward in time. So this one article is from, we'll see here. Looks like 99. This one out here was 2002 and we can keep going. This is a good way to expand who has quoted a particular article and then who is quoting the articles that are quoting them. So this is a nice mapping system to show you kind of what's happening. So this is fun. You can do all kinds of things with that, but we're going to get out of this and go back to our search. Hopefully we are going backwards. Got rid of, you can get rid of that left side of the screen, too, if you need to. I am going back. It's not going to let me go. Okay, I'm back to where I want to be. We can actually see the references. You can do all kinds of other things as well. If you want to see just the clinical trials in this particular topic, you can do so. 
All right, we have, I told you you could see substances, reactions, everything you want to see with these 155 results. You can also download these. Any of you who are using EndNote, Zotero, or any other reference manager, you might want to look at this. Um, the download, we're looking at this. We want an RIS file if we're taking it to EndNote or any of the other reference managers, unless you have a different um, request from your particular reference manager. But for EndNote, you'll want an RIS file, and then you can do click all these other buttons. Do you want which references you want? And then you can just download them. And then I import that into EndNote when I, got, when I go to my EndNote, if I want to keep that particular item. So I just wanted to show you how that works. You can save, share the results. You can do different things and send them to different people. And you can also do a save. And you can save the search so that if you're doing multiple searches in a one setting, you can uh, do the searches and then save them and do the various um, coordinate the various searches that you have. And we'll go over and we'll return to home. That's a real short into, we're looking at references. Let's do an author name because there might be a time when you want to search for somebody's name. And one that I often use because he has so many variations is Dr. Butterfield, whose name is David Allen Butterfield. And what you'll have to do for something like this, you'll start seeing names pop up. We've got the D dot Allen. We have the, a D with no dot Allen. We have a D A with no dots. And we have a D dot A dot. And you can also get, if you know his full name, you have David A's. And you have plain David and you have a David Allen. You, In order to do all those, you would want to take and select them and then add more search fields and then or all these together. And we're going to just do one real quick one. I would like to do his ORCID ID would probably be nice, but not everybody's ORCID IDs have been input. So at this point, it's kind of um, not that helpful. It's starting to be, but until they make it retroactive, it will not. They catch all of theirs. So you can look, you can see that it's highlighted what I was searching for. And you can do, again, what you've done with the other references by topic. You can filter them, but they also have an exclude button. So you can be careful and say, well, I don't want the undetermined ones. Or I don't want books, and you can exclude the books. So the books are gone out of this set. I want to exclude the biographies. But the thing of it is, once you start excluding, you have to be careful because if you go on down the screen and you decide to, you want dates are important. So I only want 2000 to 2010. And if I apply that now, it should exclude those. But it didn't, did it? I'm just going to take those out. Should have. But it, because I had the exclude, but you really need to go back to the filter. And now it has it excluded. Okay, it's got everything before 2000 and everything after 2010. If that's what I put in. Is that what I put? Yes. Okay. Any questions so far, Jason? Um, I, there's none in the chat, but I have a question. Okay. I, I see that there is a nice full text drop down in each one of those. And I was curious, yes. is this a full text type of database or is this a citation kind of abstract database? This is full text. Really? Okay. Great. Yes. Uh, and then this is another thing I needed. Glad you had the question because it has your in-house library, it has DOI, or view all sources. And you have a number of things here 
to click on. And it also you can see kind of grayed out as a view PDF. If it's open access, you'll you can go right to that. Or if it's in Scopus, it will cross over into things that we have in Scopus, whether we pay for it or not, then you can get there and get to a paywall. However, if it's in our library, you can click here and go to your in-house and hopefully go to your in-house if it is available. It will tell us whether it's available or whether we have to go through interlibrary loan. But full text is available. If it goes through properly. Does this database work better? Any particular browsers or anything like that that or a user that you might recommend, or is it just pretty good all around on I have been using Chrome till yesterday. <laughs> and Chrome went crazy yesterday with me. So I don't know. Um it's not working, but it works good usually in Chrome and I'm working in Firefox right now. Okay. Firefox works well. You see the Medline medical subject headings are here. You can also Look at these and then use those for your searches. I will caution you, those of you who use medical or mesh subheadings, you cannot connect the mesh subheadings to the headings. There's not a way. They call them qualifiers in here. Uh, they're getting some indexing from a number of places. So the qualifiers you can't search for connected to the heading. I hope that makes sense. You can lurk for the medical subject headings themselves, and then you're going to have to get the subheadings a different way. This also lists your substances. If you have any substances, it has several here. And then you can also search by the substance, substances as well. Okay. I left... This is something you're going to want to be careful for. This little button up here, return to results. If it says return to home, you're going to lose your search. Okay, you'll have it in your search history, but you'll be going back to the main screen. If it says return to home like it does now. We need to look at a couple other things here. Any No questions in the chat. So we will look at this. You can get full text of anything here. If we do not have it at the University of Kentucky Libraries, you can always interlibrary loan it. And we're going to return to home, and we're going to look at suppliers. And I'm just going to put in a drug name here. Because suppliers of chemicals and compounds are listed here and they have a number of suppliers listed in this database so anytime you're looking for a particular um, drug or compound this is where you can go and there are various suppliers here you can see that the filters on the left hand side have all changed okay now we have preferred suppliers if I had a preference it would only, it will pull up my preference first. Uh, I don't have a preference in here right now. It starts listing the suppliers. Some suppliers have more than one. It tells you the substances. It gives you the purity, the quantity, the shipping. It just has all kinds of information for your compounds. Okay. Sometimes they give... Um, prices sometimes they give whether they have block or not block but bulk shipping or bulk ordering you have all kinds of information depending on the supplier and what they have supplied to chemical abstract service chemical abstract service is located in columbus ohio and they have chemists there who actually go through a lot of this information and we'll go back to home they don't go through the supplier information, but they go through the references and substances, and they look at all of the articles and patents and everything, and they add indexing to help you find the information that you need even more uh, quickly and efficiently. Uh, I'm going to go down, continue going down the left-hand side of the screen. 
We're going to look at something else that's been added recently. I don't know if anyone deals with biosequences, but there's a whole section now on sequences. And it doesn't matter whether you have a blast, a CDR, or a motive. You can actually upload parts of sequences and search by parts of sequences. You can have the whole sequence. There's all kinds. This is a whole different world of searching, okay? And your results will be totally different than what you would get in the other areas of the database. But anytime you have somebody looking for a sequence, find out if they have any of these three and then they can do a search here. I'm not going to do one because this takes a bit of time and you have to have a sequence that you can put in here or uh, you can do all kinds of things. You can see all of the screens change. There are various options, new options now because we are doing a sequence search. Um, this gets way out of my comfort zone, but there's all kinds of things here to help you get through this. If you have questions, do not hesitate to ask somebody before doing a search here. And this also has includes the NCBI sequences, if you are familiar with those. So that's also something that you can search. We're going to do retrosynthesis. I don't know if anyone needs to do a retrosynthesis. And I think I have one saved down here that I'm going to pull up. Give me just a moment. And I'll see if I've got one that's already in here. Nope. Not at the moment. We're going to do this a different way. We're going to go back up here to the substances. And we're going to put in my drug here. And we're going to do, hopefully, what I would like to show you. No, we will go back home and we're going to put it in here. We're going to see if it'll do it here. It's not going to do it here. Go back here. As you can see, when you're doing substances, you can do a number of different things as well. My cash registry number, there's all the keys, but you can get down in here and you can do experimental spectra. And then you have the biological, you have different. They have pulled these out of articles and patents and different things, and they've pulled them all out. And you can search for them. You can actually go to the PKA. We'll do this one here. And you can actually put in a numerical value here. Um, you can do all kinds of things here and search for substances with a PKA value of whatever you input. But I want to get back to my retrosynthesis. Give me just one second. I thought I had it <clears throat> saved because it takes a little time. Mm. It's not going back. View all search history. We'll just go rerun this. There's my suppliers for wrist to palm. I don't want suppliers. We're going to go back here.
Chan, I don't think anyone can hear you. Chan, can, can you hear me? Okay, sorry everybody. I don't think Jan's having an audio issue. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. We will share the screen again. All right. And we will we'll share this one and we'll get back. Where did you all lose me? Do you know where you lost me? Audio? Um, you were still in the compound map, I think. Okay. Um, with the, yes, like with the molecules and stuff. Okay. You can see that. I will get this away. So we're going to return to home. And where did the did you see the retrosynthesis? I think a part of it, but I don't think okay. you would, were able to um, explain like the last half. I want to say. Okay. I will just tell you about it instead of going there again and and possibly getting lost again in the audio. So I don't know what happened when we went there, but a retrosynthesis takes you from the end product to how it was created and it takes you through the various steps and it will help you see how a compound was created or a drug was created. I would say, the best thing for you to do is try this on your own and actually see what happens when you do it on your own. I think that would probably be the best so I don't lose you today. Uh, we will, we've gone through some of the items down the left-hand column here, but I think we've hit all of these major places to search. The one thing I will tell you though, and repeat again, is that all the filters change with every screen. So in every area that you search, the references filter changes. Um, I'll just do a quick, we'll do that there, search acid rain. It just, and you saw some various options come up. Uh, this is way more than we wanted, but I will show you what patterns look like here. Anytime there, this, database SciFinder only has chemical patents. It does not have the whole USPTO database, okay, because SciFinder is chemistry centric, okay. So we'll want to look at that, and now we are in patents. I've asked it just the patents come up for our acid rain search that we did, which is really not one you're probably going to want to do because the results are too large. Uh, you'll want to do something more specific. But you can see here we have a U.S. patent. It's the first one. I'll show you a little more about the database. Um, it's in English, and it came from the Chemical Abstracts database. You will have patents that come from Medline as well, and it will tell you here at the database which database this particular reference came from. 
If it came from both of them, which happens frequently, it'll have both CA plus and midline. If you look at patent pack, if anyone has used patent pack previously, before this year, we at one point could only see five patents. We could look at five patents with our subscription. Now you can look at endless number of patents. So if you click the patent here, then you have various options. That's why I say anytime you see a carrot or uh, any kind of arrow that you can click on, click on it because you're going to have multiple options. You can see the, the USPTO patent. You can get it in a PDF format. You can get it in a PDF plus or another kind of viewer. Um, let's just look at it in the PTO. Nope. Or this is just the actual record. I'm sorry. We will go back one. And we actually want to look at this in a PDF format because we want to see the entire patent. Hopefully. I clicked it. And now I'm going to have to go look on my screen and see where the PDF went. It should be popping up here. But it is not. Let's try another one. You'll have to look at these. They'll be on your computer when it pulls it up. Let's just go to this one. And we'll just look at it this way. You can start seeing what information is here. And what will be nice is you'll get the IPC data as well, which means you're going to get all the classification codes. And this is the IPC, the International Patent Code classes. We won't go there because there's now a common classification too, which is going to be important too for people doing any kind of patent work. But you can see that. You can see the substances down below. This is a substance database. We're in, we're in SciFinder, even though we're getting the patents, we're going to get all the drawings for the patents. Okay. You can search for patents as well in this particular database. And you can do, if you know what a, a Marcouche search is, you can also do a Marcouche patent search. And we'll go back to substances and we'll look for you there because that is something that may be helpful as well. And what a Marcouche patent search is, is you can take a drawing of a compound and you can search the patent literature. And what happens when you're doing a patent search on a structure, you also want to cover not just the exact structure that you have, but you may want to make substitutions. And you can make substitutions at any point, and you can make substitutions in a number of ways, you can make rings, add rings, and have all different kinds of substitutions. And that gets very involved. And But if you're doing a patent search for a chemical, you're going to probably want to do that. Um, and you can get started here in the SciFinder database and do a lot of the work prior to sending it off to a patent attorney. All right, a couple other things that might be of help. If you have a large uh, set, you might want to look at the Chem Abstract sections where they take and divide their references and substances in large categories. Uh, if you are only concerned with food and feed chemistry, you, in this particular search that we've done, you can get it down to 269 results quite quickly. Uh, if you want to see the patents, we did our initial search in acid rain and we did to patents. And now we're doing within those patents, we're looking at food and food stuff. Probably not where you would have started for something with food and food stuffs, but uh, that's where we are at the moment. So you can see the various patents. In that particular section of Chem Abstracts. 
when this was a paper product, these sections were sometimes how they had them in the paper product. But now that it's all digital, uh, it's a little bit more of just a um, way to narrow your results. Okay, we're going to return home. That's a patent. And if we were doing substances, we'll go back there again. This is what makes this database so unique is that you can actually draw the substances. And we've talked about this a minute before as well. Um, so we need to, but I want to go back to that because it is where it sets this database apart because you have the drawings, you have the cash registry numbers, you have the molecular formulas, which you can sometimes find in other databases, Medline and other places. Sometimes you can find them, but here it's essential. Every molecular formula that is in the article is indexed. The structures are all indexed for an article. So it's not just what the author has placed keywords on the articles. They take all these other things out like the substances and the molecular formu formulas and add those to the indexing so that you can pull it from any of these. So if you know a particular molecular formula or you have a certain drawing, you can pull up anything in this database that is related to it and you get all the information for it. You have your search history below, different things that you've searched. You will also can look at your saved searches if you have some saved searches. And I'm going to, I was doing, playing with brain neoplasms earlier as indexing and finding out how many were just from CA plus. And there are some references that you will find just from Chem Abstracts that were not in Medline. I'll see if we have some other things here that might be of we have I have some author searches here because I did some author searching for people and to get all of their um, people who have hyphenated names are very interesting this is we'll run rerun this one on Dr. Grokey um, this is his we did a search and for, took his name and all his variations on his name. He's a chemical engineer, was a chemical engineer. And then we can use the filters and look at his various articles, but you can see right away, we have a full text here. And let's, let's just go to our in-house and see if it works this time. Okay, and this one, this will happen to you a lot. You'll have to sign in, and this one would have to go to our library loan. It's not something that we have. So I'm going to go back and pick a different one and hopefully find one that we do have. Let's go. You should be able to get to the results. Oh, now I've got to figure out which one. It's not taking me directly to the actual article itself, but we can look which one was. So volume 221. Nope. I see this. Did we click two or three? I think it was two. It was two. So I need 221. Okay, we're going to go back over. 2021. And for some journals, you have to do this. It's not automatic. Some, it will take you directly to. Well, you can see it's got the other. I'm going to go up to the top and look for his name. Maybe that might be faster. 
Okay, and since we're getting about, uh, it's about 12.54, I just wanted to um, thank you. I, I had a quick couple of questions. I didn't see any in the chat, but my one question is, is I know I've heard that like in um, some of the uh, uh, medical databases that maybe there's a, a little bit of a lag while something's being indexed, like for a mesh term, things like that. So there might be a little bit of a lag. Is there a lag in, in this database since you mentioned that they do some pretty thorough hand or computer indexing? Yes, there is some lag. Some things go in immediately um, and they may go in prior to full indexing. So you may find some stuff with partial indexing and you will get Medline added as Medline updates their database. So you, it will then appear in SciFinder. Okay. If you, um, we have the archive databases and you have things like PubChem and PubMed that also show up in here. And as they're updated, they come into this database. I got you. Um, we have a question. Um, are all UK affiliates able to register for an account on SciFinder? If they have a UK link blue or email, if they have a UK email, that's what it's your registration is based on. If you do not have a UK email, you won't be able to register. And you need to register on campus the first time. And then after you register, you can use it from anywhere in the world. Jan, I have one, one more question. Do you have okay. a resource that um, you could put on the screen for people who might want to learn more, maybe a guide or any contact information for you that people watching this later could go to? And um... If you go to the chemistry guide, I've pulled up here. It's also on uh, finding chemistry. Can you see it now, the chemistry yes. guide? Okay, it's on here. It's on a number of the pharmacy guides. I know that Rebecca's put it on several of them, but if you look for SciFinder N and you see the register blue again, if you haven't registered, you want to be sure and register because you can't just go into the database. Um, you have to register initially. And then you can, but any of the guides, you can also, if we go back to the database itself, if you go up here to the person and go to the help and support, there will be guides there as well. And there will be uh, PDFs and videos there to take you step by step through various types of searches. Well, I have to say that the last time that I saw you do an update on this database, there's so much more new content in here. And, and the visual search was pretty incredible. Um, I really want to thank you, Jan, for, for helping us out and doing this. Um, and we hope to have you back um, maybe in the fall. Okay. You can do any kind of, you can call me or you can call the 800 number as well if you have issues. They're very helpful. All right. Well, um, at this moment, since we're out of time, uh, thank you all for coming and thank you all in the future who are watching this and reach out to Jan and, and the company if you have any questions. Thank you all for coming today.